Life in Laughter. Kathy Conversations with Madeline Smith. In conversation with Bill Lawrence. Episode 2. And in this conversation, Maddie talked about how she moved from working in a boutique in trendy Chelsea to life as a model in Paris and her first acting role in films. Bieber and beyond. Right, this is about the beyond, isn't it? Well... So now I've joined Lucy Clayton Model Agency, but I do have to tell you that I did, had meantime, made a little film with Georgie Fame. Oh, yes. I had answered an ad. I'll make this very brief. I'd answered an ad at the back of the stage newspaper. And guess what? I got the part. They gave me a little audition and I got the part and there I am in bed with Georgie Fame. Very nice. That secured me an acting agent. More of that later. Hang on. Who's Georgie Fame? Who is Georgie Fame? What? <laughs> Alan Price and, and Georgie and the Blue Flames and oh he's wonderful. So he was a, a pop star? Well jazz really. Jazz. He more jazz wasn't he? He was a bit like Dudley Moore. I would put Dud and Georgie Fame in the same box. If I'd take a box to bed with me and couldn't sleep I would rub the little genie lamp, and I think I'd probably have Georgie Fame jump up first of all. Um, and he, it's very easy listen. I would call it very easy listening jazz. He still tours actually with his son playing drums. So you've done this uh, film. Yeah, yeah. So required you sitting in bed with Georgie. Fame. Well, only briefly, and not sitting, lying, and then running out. It was a ridiculous film called The Mini Mob. Uh, we made it uh, outside Maidenhead. Uh, in a huge, terrifying house. It was freezing cold. And I was wearing clothes designed by, and I can't remember, Jeff Banks. Very famous. Went on to become even more famous. Um, And the story was four really naughty girls who decide they want to capture different people. It was typical 60s rubbish, really. Uh, So we capture an MP and a pop star and a DJ and something else. I can't remember what the other one was. Might have only been three. And we had lots of fun, lots and lots of fun. It really was absolutely super. Directed by an American a documentary maker, actually, called Robert Amram. And um, I think a, a Texan oil guy had put money into it. But all very homemade and very, very delightful. Very niche, OK? So I thoroughly enjoyed that. Got me an acting agent. Got me a temporary member of equity. And then, so now I'm going to go back to modelling. And so back to Lucy Clayton and adventures. And one day I'm walking down the King's Road with my little list of photographers. Knock, 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 knock. Please, can I come and say hello? Will you take my photograph? I'm very young and I'm very dim and I'm very thin, but I want to be a model. Right, so I'm walking down the King's Road and I'm approached by a chap called Donald Camel, who at that time had written a film for Mick Jagger and it was called Performance and it's actually very famous and about the underworld and Mick was fantastic in this thing. Anyway, Camel... Edward Edward Fox? uh, James Fox. James Fox. And after that, James Fox got Jesus. He actually was so sickened at heart by the life that he was leading but that's when he left showbiz altogether and went off. Uh, I don't know whether he actually went into the church, but he married a nurse, I think. I, I can't remember the story in detail, but a very wan-faced James Fox, whom I met almost immediately after. That was it. He finished with showbiz for years and literally went and joined the, the you know, the Jesus disciples. Good for him. Wonderful, actually. Um, I think he was appalled at the, at the life he'd been leading. Whether he was very drugged or what, I d- no idea. But he was a lovely, lovely guy. But anyway, so Donald said, 
Oh, hello, in this wonderful voice. I know, uh, I can't remember the guy's name now, um, this particular photographer in, in, in something or other studios off the King's Road. I will introduce you. And he introduced me to this guy who I think did the picture or the compilation photo uh, for um, Sergeant Pepper. I'm so sorry, I cannot remember that. I, I've tried to, tr for years to remember his name. I think it was actually Michael Cooper, Maddie. Well... And strangely enough, this guy took some very nice photographs of me. Um, but that's another story entirely. Donald said to me, it's lovely to meet you. Would you like to come to a wedding reception tomorrow? <laughs> I'm all of 18 and a virgin. But anyway, um, so, so <laughs> I turned up the next day and it turned out to be Roman Polanski's wedding reception at the Playboy Club. And Roman had just married poor little Sharon Tate who tragically was, was murdered, as, as I think pretty well everybody knows. And um, there I met Warren Beatty, and um, Warren Beatty said some very nice things to me and invited me to tea, and that's another story as well. I think he, I think he often said very nice things to I, lots I of I think ladies. he did, but it is another story, but I'll very quickly tell that I turned up to have tea with Warren, but Warren didn't have very many clothes on. Uh, and I think as we're on radio, um, uh, and not a sort of midnight club. I think I, I, I won't tell any more of that story, but I was out of there pretty quickly. I'm leaving, I'm leaving all of it hanging, but I, I went home quite quickly, or shall we say very quickly. <laughs> and Warren said that he thought I was a very intelligent young woman, and those were actually his words. That's a very nice compliment. It was a very nice compliment, but I, I, think, I, I think I dashed home quicker than I'd ever dashed anywhere. But anyway... <laughs> So I absolutely loved modelling. Literally, the, 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 the work started rolling in and I was off. Sometimes I'd come home, the phone would ring and I'd say to my mum, I'm awfully sorry, I can't eat dinner, I'm off to Germany. Right. Literally. And there was one time I spent 10 days in Hamburg working for a lovely magazine called Brigitta. It's very nice. I would say it's a very dangerous uh, career. You can theoretically get into a lot of trouble. And on one occasion... I was doing a job or going to do a job in Paris and first of all the um, air traffic controllers were on strike so I couldn't get home. That was the second half of the story. The first half of the story is that I got to the airport in Paris and the cabs were on strike and there was, um, he called himself a car de luxe and he uh, stopped halfway on, on the journey to my little guest house. And he said, I'm not going any further unless you give me all the money you've got. Right. And he also made worse threats than that, oh some of which I can't actually remember. But it was very, very frightening indeed. So that I spent a week in Paris with no money and then I couldn't even get home. So That's quite a lonely yeah, occupation, isn't it? Very, very lonely. And, and in order to get home, I went to the airport, was informed... We're going to close the airport now. Everybody's to go. And I thought, what, what am I going to do with myself? And a lovely chap came up to me. And I mean lovely. He, he was a vet. And he said to me, um, I actually did understand French. I'd actually done French A-level, luckily. And he said, look, I'm very honourable. Come and spend the night in my bed. Mm. Oops. And yes. I'll sleep on the floor. And a flight is due to come in from East Africa. Uh, without air traffic control, yike, and I will get us to the airport because I have to get there for a conference, I've got to get to London for a conference, and, you know, anyway, he was completely honourable, yes, I slept a few hours in his bed, he did sleep on the floor, he was wonderful, and, um, and, and yes, the plane came in, East African Airways, and we got back, and my mummy was waiting about 4am or whatever it was at the airport for me, and I remember never, never being so pleased to see her in my life, I think. What sort of things were you modelling? Were you modelling clothes, mainly? A lot of it was beauty, just the face and the hair. 
Okay. So uh, skin products, hair, uh, magazine work, petticoat magazine, honey magazine. Uh, yeah, a lot of fashion. Uh, and sometimes you, you'd, you'd have an hour's work. Sometimes you'd have half a day, sometimes a full day. I would say to any young lady contemplating modeling, do be careful. Do be careful. Ideally, have somebody with you to make sure you're safe. You're very vulnerable. You're alone with a photographer, and really and truly, anything can happen. So you didn't have a chaperone at all? No, and the agent doesn't look after you, or didn't. Maybe they do now. They were absolutely lovely. I adored the people who worked at Lucy Clayton, but you were very much on your own. And you had to have, I mean, I had all my luggage stolen between um, Berlin and Hamburg. Everything was stolen. All my wigs, my beloved Teddy, everything that was in the hold of the plane was pinched. So it, it, it's a very dicey profession. And what with the various cab drivers and people, you know, you're very much out on a limb and very, very much on your own. However, there is a glamour to it, isn't there? No, not really. The photographs are. When you appear in magazines and newspapers, obviously there's a huge glow. My mum kept all my cuttings and put them in black bags and I've got them to this day. But uh, it's not so much glamorous as the thrill of appearing in print, you know, and the fun of being made to look pretty. Uh, having been in convent school for seven years, you know, in that dreadful school uniform, drab and awful, it was it was amazing to come out. You know, it's like it's like all the lights were suddenly turned on in my life. So I really did thoroughly enjoy it. I did modelling for about 18 months. But in that time, you're at the top of your game. You're travelling all over Europe. Yeah, and surely was. this was the road to fortune and fame. It wasn't really in those days. For example, uh, uh, after a year, I hadn't been paid any money. And there was a new accountant for Lucy Clayton who actually rang me and said, Madeline, I've got all your stubs here, but I, I see that, that you, no money has come in. Uh, how's about I try and seek it out for you? And then suddenly I had a lot of money. And can I tell you, I had joined the Royal Bank of Scotland. And in those days, you had 15% interest. Suddenly wow. I was in the money <laughs> and you couldn't keep me out of all the antique shops after that. Yeah. So what a few months they were. Or 18 months, 18 months. And then the phone rang and it was the acting agent who said, Maddie, are you still interested in playing at being an actress? Those were her words. Oh, yes. Still this high pitched squeaky little voice. Yes. And she said, well, I would like you to audition for a part in a film with, guess what, Ava Gardner. That was episode two of A Life in Laughter with Madeline Smith. <laughs>